Speech breathing involves a variety of processes that significantly change the respiratory pattern. In order to produce a significant quantity of speech, speech breathing requires a greater volume of air. Speech breathing also requires careful control of expiration pressure. Since speech only happens while exhaling, the respiratory cycle is also asymmetric. In tidal volume, speech breathing requires between 1 and 2 liters of air on average, using 20 to 25 percent of the vital capacity on average. The volume depends on the required loudness of the speech and the length of the utterance to be produced. Usually, to get the appropriate volume, inspiration happens to a level where the recoil forces for expiration are about the right pressure for speech. The required pressure for speech is greater than during respiration for life. Typically, speech requires plus 8 centimeters of oxygen in pressure um, during expiration rather than the plus 2 centimeters that's used in respiration just for tidal breathing uh, for oxygen exchange purposes. To control that expiratory pressure, muscular activity is required. After inspiration, the relaxation pressure is controlled. The muscles of inspiration relax gradually. Complete relaxation of those muscles would empty the lungs too quickly for speech. During expiration, when capacity is nearing the resting state, relaxation pressure will be insufficient to produce speech, and the muscles of expiration will progressively contract to increase the expiratory pressure to the level required for speech. Control of pressure also requires quickly adjusting pressure within the utterance. For stressed syllables and fricatives, for example, there is additional pressure that's required. During speech breathing, the abdominal muscles are contracted, pressing the viscera against the diaphragm. This lessens the contribution of the diaphragm to respiration and resists the diaphragm's return to the resting state. The abdominal muscles as stabilizers allow the lower ribcage muscles to work more effectively, and the ribcage muscles are used to quickly adjust the required pressure for speech. A symmetry of the speech breathing cycle during um, respiration. Since expiration is required for speech to happen, 90% of the cycle is used during expiration, and 10% of the cycle is used for inspiration. These inspiration periods are usually timed to coincide with uh, appropriate structures in language, so between different phrases, for example. Since a small amount of the cycle is used for inspiration, there's a larger volume to be inhaled in a shorter amount of time. Quiet breathing for life usually happens through the nasal cavity. For speech breathing, air is inhaled through the mouth to allow greater airflow. There are changes in speech breathing patterns over the lifespan. For children, the pressure that's used for speech is generally higher than it is for adults and children use a larger range of their vital capacity. Children start with inspiration to a higher level compared to adults, and also finish with uh, extension of expir expiration past the resting state. There's a change over the lifespan as well in the use of the rib cage during speech. Uh, young children use the rib cage uh, about 50-50 with the abdominal muscles for controlling speech pressures, Adult use is around 80%, um, uh, and all of these measures appear to reflect increasing proficiency and control of respiration for speech. Speech breathing is also different in older adults. Older adults use a larger range of their vital capacity, inspiration to a higher level compared to young adults. Their use of air also appears to be less efficient. For example, measures of airflow find more air is expended per syllable in older adults than it is in younger adults. There are some additional suggestive differences in the literature, um, but they don't have a lot of evidence to back them up at this time. There appears to be increased use of the abdominal space. Uh, there also appears to be a greater preservation of inspiratory muscle functions relative to expiratory muscle functions. Um, so older adults would be motivated to use less of the vital capacity that's below the resting level uh, in order to use their most effective muscles. 
respiration for singing is even more extreme than respiration for speech. And uh, uh, in cases of, for example, professional singing, you can be testing the capacities of your respiratory system. Singing may use the full range of the vital capacity, whereas speech only uses sort of the mid-range of vital capacity. Singing is generally of um, higher amplitude, and so much higher pressures are needed. For example, around 40 centimeters of H2O positive pressure versus the plus 8 for speech, or the plus 2 for quiet respiration. Singing involves greater activity in both the inspiratory and expiratory muscles as a result. The inspiratory volume is increased in order to have enough air uh, to flow out at that higher pressure rate to have an adequate amount of air for what needs to be sung. Expiration is generally extended uh, farther beyond the resting level using extra ex expiratory muscle activity. Uh, and again, this extra muscular activity is needed to have higher pressures take place.